right, welcome back. Defiant Wings, Defiant 28 build series. I believe this is, I'm losing track. Maybe v number eight, number nine. Uh, and this, in this one, we're going to go over some, uh, some of the techniques that I use for painting these. Um, I used to, uh, well, first of all, let me just go over a little, uh, point I forgot to mention in the last video about spraying, uh, 3M, 3M90 here. Um, I always spray, if you look down on the nozzle, you see a, uh, L, M, and H. Uh, I guess it's, it's really like low, medium, and high. I always spray in medium. Uh, I find that that gives me the best, the best pattern. Not too much, not too little. Good spread, etc. So, uh, when you're spraying this stuff, go on medium. Other spray cans like uh, 3M77, uh, for instance, uh, don't have that kind of a nozzle on there. Um, so, I used to, I painted. Uh, you can see here, these are some older. Yard bashers here. This one's up been up in the overhead of my shop for a while. It's kind of dusty here, but it's uh, this was painted with this Rust-Oleum fluorescent here. Uh, this is Depron foam. Works fine. Um, you can paint with that if you want some some bright neon colors. Shelby was uh, on, a, on a live video today. Was was painting uh, with a bunch of this orange. That's his color. Uh, this stuff works fine. Um, I've painted a few planes with uh, this stuff here, 2X Ultra Cover. They got a million different colors at um, Home Depot. Lowe's has a similar kind of paint. I think I think it's um, I don't have any handy, but it's I think their brand is Valspar. Same kind of stuff. The only thing with this stuff is it uh, I can't paint inside, and during the winter time, it's it's hard to find time to paint outside. You know, paint doesn't like to be. Uh, uh, cold, you know, so you got to warm the cans up. It's got to be, it's got to warm inside or cure inside where it's warm, etc. So uh, I was turned on to this my, my latest method by um, a guy by the name of Kevin Pratt here, local legend here in the Northeast. <laughs> um, use an airbrush. Um, I was initially not really um, wanting to do any airbrushing I, I was thinking well I, I don't have the skills to airbrush you know it, it looked like garbage but um, you know what airbrushing really isn't a big deal you don't have to be artistic to use an airbrush you can use it like a miniature paint gun um, and get some pretty decent results you know like uh, using stencils you can do you know the here's a prototype you know like that fist that's all painted with a, a paint stencil I cut on my vinyl cutter um, the uh, the sticker bomb there, the logo sticker bomb, that's all painted on. Um, the beauty of this this airbrushing paint here that we use is um, it's it's water based, it's non toxic, um, and you're spraying at such low pressures inside. Uh, I think I, I'm spraying. I got my my uh, compressor here set at something like 15 or 20 pounds when it's spraying, um, maybe even less. I can't remember been been a, a month or so since I done any painting but uh, you know so there's no overspray my uh, my swimbo she who must be obeyed doesn't get pissed off about the smell nothing I mean I, I'm you know I'm only right in the basement 20 feet away from the rest of the house so um, this is the airbrush that I bought and used uh, this is I don't it was like 110 or 115 bucks on Amazon um, I would recommend this it's a dual action meaning um, you press uh, you press this button down. You can see that there. You press this button down, and you get airflow, and then you can pull it back to get a variable amount of paint flow. Um, and it uses these. Uh, you put the paint into these containers here to thin it. So switching back and forth is real easy. I uh, and I got this this method from Kevin. You know, um, you pull the paint bottle off. You put the paint. You you put the bottle that's loaded up with Windex on, and you spray it into a trash can for, you know, ten seconds or so, and you can see when it starts spraying this stuff. Block the nozzle. You know, remove this. Block the nozzle. Hit it again, and it squirts all the paint out, paint and Windex crap out the bottom. You do a couple cycles of that, and and you're good to go. Um, you switch right to the next color, and in between coats, um, I mean, if you were doing a simple paint job. 
on a Defiant, in between coats, you use a heat gun, and you just dry it. And like you know, you you can do uh, I don't know, maybe a coat every five minutes or so, really, uh, on a Defiant size wing. Um, so you can paint paint pretty damn quickly. I think uh, that the the yellow and purple prototype I showed you a few minutes ago, I painted that in in the course of maybe maybe like an hour total paint time and that was only because that sticker bomb side that I did where I I sprayed that logo many many times I don't know I never counted how many I did it but there was a lot and then outline each one as I went and so you you know I'd have to dry the the defiant 28 part and then and then apply the outline with a paint marker and then try that and then put in another the stencil back on okay so um that was kind of a longer effort. Uh, a simple paint job can be done in, you know, in an hour, maybe two hours. Um, so this is the pump I use here, uh, or the, the compressor. Um, to be honest with you, I was given this one. I think they go for like a hundred bucks. You don't need something like this. You can get like a, you know, a really cheapy at Harbor Freight. Uh, that'll work just as good. Um, you do want to go and get. Um, in the air water separator when you compress air you compress the water vapor in the air into water you don't want that getting into your airstream that'll wreck your paint job All right um in the winter time it's not a big deal the air is really dry but in the summertime it could be a problem with the humidity so uh i'm not going to go over the entire painting of this wing i'll show you kind of as best i can how i do it um i'm trying to do this video series uncut um, this is the one video that's going to kind of break that. I'm not going to have you sit here and watch me paint because, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know if I'll be able to do it all in the, in the camera view here, in the camera frame. So I'll do as much as I can here for maybe like uh, a layer and I'll show you, you know, drying it and then we'll stop. Um, I do have a couple of ideas about how I want to position the logos and, and have a paint scheme around, wrapping around the logos. So maybe we'll document that and cut that in. Um, other than that, uh, let me let me plug this in. I apologize for the noise. I'll, I'll try to speak over the noise. This this pump is pretty quiet, but it's not super quiet. I think. Uh... It, uh, it's kind of chilly in here, and this pump has some tight clearances, so it's got to warm up. So I usually just pull the hose off it and let it run for a little while and keep putting the, uh, the gun back on it until it runs continuously. So, this is completely dry now with the 3M90 on here. Uh, you know, there's no, there's no tack at all. The, and, and the fact that it's dry is not a big deal for this paint. Uh, like I said, when, once it's painted and then we hit it with some laminate and a, and a hot iron, that will, um, those layers of paint and 3M90 and laminate adhesive, it'll all fuse into a really strong bonded layer. Uh, so, oops. See if we can't get started here. So I, I don't want this video to turn into a, a series on how to how to use an airbrush. So I'm gonna get my uh, my paper. Yeah, I did mention earlier that there's no overspray. I mean, there's there's some very minor area kind of overspray. So if there's something that you really don't want to get a, get get dusted, you know, just move it. But I mean, it, it's really only limited to the extents of the bench here. It's not going to be like like you know, I don't know if you've ever been in an automotive body shop, but their their overspray if they don't spray in a booth can go everywhere and cover everything. All right, so 
Uh, let me see now. Where is... Okay. I think we're... Here's a, um, here's a tip that, that Kevin told me about that, that I, I probably would have eventually figured it out on my own too. But if you have a complex pattern that you want to practice, like um, that sticker bomb logo pattern that I did on my Defiant 28 prototype, I, uh, I didn't do, start doing it right on the wing right away. I used the wing bed to practice on, you know, so you can, you can practice on the wing bed and kind of get a feel for how to do an airbrush, you know, and, and maybe try different patterns, ideas, or whatever, all right? Um, this one here is going to be a pretty simple pattern. We're just going to, it, it's going to be this kind of shade of red. It's the only red I got, so this is what we're going to do. I think we're going to do mainly red and black on this one. Um, so I've decided I'm going to do, I'm going to paint the whole thing red first. I'm going to dry that all out first. And then, um, and then we'll start figuring out the, uh, the black and where we want that to go. We'll mask off areas we don't want red, so... You don't want to go too thick with this stuff because, um, you know, it, to hit it with the gun, you know, you can go really fast with the dryer, with the, uh, the hot air gun, and dry this stuff really fast, okay? You'll get a feel for it. Initially, you just kind of want a, you know, a dusting. This red is covering really good, though. I'm really impressed with this red. Some of the colors don't cover worth a damn, and you got to do, like, ten coats. Don't be alarmed at, at like if you if you can see like the spray lines and the patterns in what you're spraying at this point, because um, you know the, the coats are so th uh, thin at this point that it's uh, it's not a big deal. So there we go, first coat's on. Now it's going to get loud with the air dryer. So this video is going to be boring, quite literally like watching paint dry, right? <laughs> this paint is, um, you know, I, I hold the dryer, I don't know, like six, six inches away or so. If you look at it at an angle in the light, you can see it go from a, a wet, glossy look to a, a dry matte kind of color. Um, and so you can keep track on when it's dry. This is going to match pretty good with the motor color, I think, huh? It's going to look pretty sick. Maybe I want to do blue. I think I've got some, some pearl blue instead of black. The only problem is I got these, uh, I, I cut these, these Defiant logos in, in black. Maybe I'll try to find some blue. That might look pretty good. Sometimes I, when I'm building a wing, I kind of, uh, I build it up to this point, and then it, like, and I do this in, in, you know, maybe an hour and a half, two hours worth of work, and then it sits like that for for months while I try to figure out how I want to paint it. And uh, I don't know if anybody else is the same out there, but sometimes I really agonize over how I want it to look. My own airplanes, I tend to uh, build like a batch of airplanes with the same kind of general color scheme and patterns and. And then I might come up with something else and build a whole other batch in, in those, those colors. Now you can't paint a wing this fast with uh, like that, that Rust-Oleum. I don't know what kind of paint it is. Maybe um, some kind of enamel. I don't think it says on the... I'm looking at the can, but I never really paid close attention to see what kind of paint it actually is. 
but I know that you can't air dry it this fast as, like like you can with the um, the water based uh, airbrushing paints. And fast color isn't the only one that's available. You know, there's a there's a lot of different brands that are available, um, and I, I've you know, talking with Kevin a little bit. I we're starting to find out that the fast colors are becoming a little bit more difficult to get for whatever reason and we're not quite sure um, but um, you know there's other brands out there that are probably just as good uh, I just haven't used them so so that's it um, what was that like five minutes for that one coat with all the talking <laughs> so um, I'm gonna turn it over and do the other side now is over here turning in circles. It's not nailed down. I gotta nail this thing down. Just from the vibrations it like turns around in circles it's kind of funny. Kevin has some techniques where he'll uh, he'll shoot at a at an angle like this. And it, and, it, and it turns out some pretty neat uh, effects. You can kind of see how it's dusting just the forward edge of some of that foam. But you can kind of hit it and get some really nice fades and stuff. Uh, I don't do that because I fly with him. I don't want to be seen as copying him. But uh, you guys want to try that out, feel free. There's a million different videos out there on YouTube on uh, airbrushing um skills if you will <laughs> tutorials stuff like that um, I love to be able to, to get better with this I just I don't really have the, the artistic nature if you will you can buy a lot of different stencils out there for airbrushing um, made out of really thin like plastic kind of material um, that you tape in place and you stencil over. Um, Kevin's got some, some, he's building a right wing demon right now, and so he got like some demon stencils and it looks really awesome. This, uh, the battery bay, I, I kind of wish, I regret not painting that white first. Um, I find that if you've got the dark colors and you want to cover it up with a lighter color, you gotta you gotta paint it white first. Oh well, it's gonna look great flying by, right? This red is covering really, really well. I think I might only need maybe two or three coats. We'll see what it looks like after two, but it's covering really good. So you can kind of see how I was talking about like the lines right here. You see that where I hit it and it was kind of, you know, overlapping and it looks more covered. You know, there's, there's more paint there than elsewhere. On the next, on the next uh, coat that I do, I'll paint in the opposite direction from that and, and it tends to try to um, correct some of that. You know, if you were a professional auto body guy or something like that, you'd probably be able to paint and not have that show up. But uh, it's going to look, look fine in the air, trust me. <laughs> When you paint too, this kind of really shows up any kind of gaps that you left in the spars. I don't know if you can if you can see those gaps there. See that? Not a big deal. I wouldn't even bother filling that. Um, if you want to, go for it. But I'll tell you what, that spar is glued in there. That sucker ain't coming out, and this wing has gotten very stiff since that um, E6000 is cured in there.
didn't see it, so I should have got the leading edge a little bit better. That's all right though, because the uh, the leading edge is going to be covered up by another color, so I'm not terribly worried about that. This uh, this paint is supposed to be like a like a nice red, but I think it's more like a pearl candy candy pearl red kind of color, and it's really nice. I hate when I build a wing for somebody else and it's better than the stuff that I do. <laughs> I gotta do something on this one to correct that. Okay, so that one's done. So, so that's about it, guys. I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna show you the other, um, the other coats that I do. Um, I, I'm gonna cut this part of it off right here, and we'll pick up again um, when we get to the the other color and positioning and taping off for that that other color.